AMD just announced its new Zen 5 CPUs today, including the 9950X. They had several others as well, and also more AM4 CPUs. So they still haven't stopped shipping the last generation sockets. But in addition to that, they've announced an expectation of on average a 16% IPC uplift for the Geomean. It's as low as 10% in the slide they presented, up to 35 or so. And this is with Intel Arrow Lake around the corner. Should be sometime later this year based on the rumors that are out right now. So it's actually gonna be a really busy year for CPUs. But AMD had a lot to say with its pre-briefing, its announcement about new chipsets. So they've got X870 and X870E that have now been formally announced. Uh, new, as they call them, AI CPUs. It's basically the new mobile CPUs. Uh, and then on top of the Ryzen 9000 series, which is Zen 5, they've got the AM4 Ryzen 5000 series CPUs in the XT lineup. So that is what we're talking about today. Plenty of AI buzzwords surrounding all of it. Uh, but ultimately, we're in Taiwan all week for this and other news, including the rest of Computex. So you should check out the channel for what we've posted so far and what we have coming, because it's been multiple posts per day, including keynotes from NVIDIA and Intel, in addition to this AMD one. Let's get started. Before that, this video is brought to you by the Fractal Torrent High Airflow Case. The Fractal Torrent is one of the best air cooling performers we've tested, largely thanks to its included 180 by 38 millimeter fans. The Torrent is spacious and easy to work in, with what Fractal emphasizes is a heavy focus on function. The case uses a unique front panel to add some flair without a major impact to performance. You can learn more at the link in the description below. We'll get straight into this one today, no BS. Andy was very straightforward with its pre-briefing with us. They have a keynote as well that Lisa Sue should be hosting. If there's anything major in there that wasn't in the pre-briefing, then we'll either cover it separately or post a comment below. But we think we got pretty much everything from the pre-brief that's gonna be immediately relevant to our audience. This is gonna be the fastest possible recap we can do because we're in the middle of the show. It's all kind of chaos right now. So starting with the new CPUs, here's what AMD sent to us for the specs. They said there are four CPUs announced immediately for July, 2024. These include the R9 9950X, R9 9900X, R7 9700X, and R5 9600X, not counting the non-AM5 CPUs that we mentioned earlier. So for these, the core counts are predictable. The AMD R9 9950X is a 16-core 32-thread CPU. The 9900X is a 12-core 24-thread CPU. The 9700X is an 8-core CPU. Uh, 9600X is a 6-core CPU following the existing nomenclature. The 9950X runs 80 megabytes of cache and a 170-watt TDP. So far, this is all the same as the 7950X. The frequency claims a maximum boost of up to 5.7 gigahertz, which AMD 7950X also claims. The 9900X is also about the same as the 7900X, except for TDP, which is lower. That has it more efficient than the 7900X, as it has otherwise comparable specs at a lower power level, assuming AMD used the same variables as its formula for TDP for both of these generations. The 9700X and the 9600X, however, both see a 100 megahertz clock increase as compared to the AMD official specs for the 7700X and 7600X. TDP comes down actually to 65 watts from 105 watts previously, and assuming the AMD is using the same variables for its TDP formula, this would indicate a power savings at slightly better specs, plus the benefit from the architectural change. Now for these, AMD has not yet announced prices or a specific day for release besides July of this year. Now before moving on to the other chipset and the architectural information, AMD is also launching its new R9 5900 XT and R7 5800 XT AM4 CPUs, which is pushing AM4's life yet another year further. In the past, we weren't big fans of the XT refreshes with AMD's 3000 series lineup, but things have changed with these. AMD isn't formally announcing a price for these. However, we were briefed with a set of information that contained a $360 price for the 5900 XT and $250 for the 5800 XT. AMD, however, later retracted this information and stated that it was an error. We're not certain whether it was a typo or the actual pricing, but just included by accident. Either way, the 5900XT is a 16-core CPU. It's a notable increase from the prior 5900X because the XT, apparently that extra letter gets you another four cores. That already makes these much different from the older XT refreshes, which were just small clock bumps. The 5800XT is still a more predictable eight-core CPU. TDP and clock targets are the same for the 5900XT and the 5900X. The 5800XT has a 100 megahertz claimed increase by spec sheets. 
and launch is July for these as well. To finalize the CPU hard specs before moving on to the background information and architecture, the Ryzen 300 AI series is also new. And we need to start with nomenclature for these because maybe Intel's snake oil presentation finally got under AMD's skin. So they're changing it again. And as flawed as the snake oil presentation was, uh, they had some points in there about AMD's naming. So the company now has decided it has a confusing enough naming scheme. It's time to put out a new graphic explaining it all. And here it is. The AMD Ryzen AI is fixed for this family of CPUs. The nine is what the 357 and nine always mean for Ryzen. The two letters have moved forward in the name between the nine and the three digit number. This example, moving it from the suffix previously to now a prefix, but not that much of a prefix that it would be before the nine or the AI. That's more important. So it goes before the, 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 the three digit numbers and after the AI and the nine. The three digit number change is also different. Previously it was a four digit naming. Gordon and I made fun of all of this years ago when AMD provided a decoder wheel to the press for the naming scheme because it was that confusing. Uh, and additionally, they are moving the suffix. So the U, the HS, the H and the HX have all now changed uh, to be in a different spot. AMD said that HX now indicates that the solution is simply the top of the stack as opposed to previously where it was more of a thermal indicator for where the CPU lands for the TDP configuration. So uh, with that in mind, the 300 series will now have a configurable TDP from 15 to 54 watts. Uh, two of the announced CPUs include the AI9HX370 and AI9365. The HX370 is a 12-core CPU on Zen 5, which brings with it 4 nanometer process. Its max boost is 5.1 gigahertz and base is 2.0. The CPU claims 50 peak NPU tops, or tera operations per second, when using the industry's new favorite singular number to represent the amalgamation of an entire CPU and billions of transistors. TDP is 28 watts and CTDP is 15 to 54 watts, with cache at 36 megabytes and an RDNA 890M IGP running 16 CUs at 2900 megahertz. And they also use the phrase RDNA 3.5 for this generation. The AI9365 is a 10-core 20-thread CPU at up to 5 gigahertz, depending on the power and the workload. This one is running an 880M IGP with 12 CUs, a significant cut down on the GPU component. Now, AMD hasn't gotten too deep into the Zen 5 specifics yet. They may have said a little bit more on stage. Normally, they preserve all that information, though, and release it later. So we're expecting a deeper dive on the Zen 5 architecture, probably in or closer to that July area for the upcoming CPU launch. We do have a couple of super basic things though from the presentation, the pre-briefing. So the company stated these three points so far without any elaboration. One, improved branch prediction accuracy and reduced latency during branch prediction. Two is higher throughput with wider pipelines and vectors. And three is a deeper window size across design for more parallelism, they say, uh, based on this slide. Regardless, the company claims that its Zen 5 improvements contribute up to, quote, 2x benefit in instruction bandwidth and other places like, quote unquote, AI processing. For X870 and X870E, AMD has announced that it will support USB 4 on all these boards. We know that they have B-series chipsets in the works as well, and we've actually already spoken with the motherboard vendor about them. AMD noted PCIe Gen 5 concurrent support with NVMe Gen 5 and higher Expo clock support as a notable feature of the X800 series chipsets. On the NPU and XDNA2 side, AMD announced that this solution is what it calls, quote, the world's first block FP16 MPU, and we'll kind of stop there for the AI discussion for now because we just don't have enough information to go further into it. Now for some quick performance numbers. So we'll run our own testing once these CPUs become available for review. And uh, as always, we prefer to just kind of wait for our numbers or any third party numbers to draw conclusions. However, it helps to understand the first party claims and where the company is trying to position its CPUs and which CPUs it's challenging the most. So we'll go over just a couple of the things AMD said against its own Zen 4 CPUs. AMD says IPC uplift ranges from 10 to 35% in this slide with an average of 16% geo mean. In this next slide, it shows the 9950X at 4% to 23% advantage over the 14900K. And again, we'll run our own test to validate this claim or disprove it, whatever the case may be. The company also claims a 7 to 56% uplift in a wide range and various tests of production workloads. And they also explicitly mentioned Snapdragon in the slide deck, which has actually been super interesting because Intel and AMD now both are targeting Snapdragon. The fact that they're both bringing it up in their presentations kind of indicates that there's some validity there to the concerns of what's going on uh, outside of the x86 space. It's almost like an enemy of my enemy situation 
with AMD and Intel. Also, the sun is going down, and I think we are at maximum brightness on our lights, but we're almost at the end, so that's okay. AMD also announced a few other things at the show, but they're out of our usual coverage spectrum. Still, we'll go over a couple of them. On the consumer side, the last note we had was that AMD officially announced the extension of its AM5 socket life into 2027 and beyond. So this follows the unexpected multiple extensions of AM4, and uh, in this front, AMD is absolutely killing it for culture support with these platform life extensions where uh, the gaming enthusiast crowd, it really extends the longevity, it makes it so that you can drop in CPUs, and this has been something that we've been supportive of for AM4, and hopefully Intel catches on as well. So that was the change for AM5. Now on the enterprise and server solution side, AMD announced the new Instinct MI325X GPUs and AI Edge product, fifth gen AMD Epic CPUs for end of 2024, and it made it a point to talk about its CPU performance growth, almost seemingly in response to NVIDIA's comments about CPUs having not meaningfully changed in 60 years. You can watch our NVIDIA keynote coverage later for commentary on that. AMD showed its fifth gen Epic CPUs at up to 192 cores, 384 threads, and being compatible with Socket SP5. The company also had a slide that says, Ultra Ethernet is the answer for scale out AI infrastructure. And quote, interestingly, Intel and AMD are both on board for this, whereas Nvidia explicitly stated in its meandering pointless keynote that Ethernet is simply not sufficient. So that AMD and Intel share a slide is huge, especially in AMD's own keynote presentation. They are positioning themselves and their partners as against the proprietary NVLink. So this is gonna be a kind of exciting battle between it looks like just Nvidia versus everybody. So that covers it for the AMD announcements. I'm not sure if I'm still visible on the screen. It doesn't really matter. That's all the news though. Check back because we have a motherboard discussion uh, where we show one of the new boards for AMD CPUs. And then we also have some case roundups already. So we saw Antex, uh, we saw uh, Fantex, Lee and Lee, those will be going up. And then we also have already posted Scythe and its new CPU coolers. Check all that out on the channel. Be sure to check back regularly because we'll be posting multiple times a day all throughout this week and YouTube might not send you all of those videos just because there's gonna be so many of them. So check back, subscribe for more. Thanks for watching as always, and we'll see you all next time.